Welcome to another episode of Dr. Brooke on the Block. It's time to grab a seat, buckle up, and take a ride with me through the wild, wild west of the Web3 universe, where we're going to learn all about coins and tokens, NFTs and contracts, digital real estate and the metaverse, and so much more. There is a lot to get through on the block, but I am here to pave the way and help you avoid those nasty pitfalls and rug pulls so you don't get hurt. I'm going to also introduce you to some interesting characters along the way. Are you ready? Your ride starts Welcome, now. welcome to another episode of Dr. Brooke on the Block. I am your host, Dr. Brooke the crypto proctor and if you are new here and this is your first ride that you are taking with us welcome we are so excited to have you join us if you are a oldie and you've been on this roller coaster ride with me for many many episodes now welcome back you know what kind of ride you're in for today and what do we tell all of our friends all of the people joining us we let them know they need to buckle up tight. We are going in for a great one, but it's going to be bumpy. So buckle up your seats. The ride is getting ready to start and we are taking off. Woo! All right. So what is the question or what is the topic? Where are we at in the Web3 world right now on this, on this roller coaster? Well, we are going to be answering, in my opinion, the question, will Bitcoin be going to zero? Now, this is a question a lot of people who are currently investing in the space are asking themselves or asking colleagues and friends and family members and acquaintances and all sorts of different people in the world, right? Will Bitcoin go to zero? Then you got people on the sidelines, maybe people who are just joining us and coming into this episode, the first and foremost, will Bitcoin be going to zero? They're coming in, they're on the sidelines going, well, will it? Will it? Am I just a stupid overzealot, like thinking like this is going to be a get rich quick scheme? Like, am I making a good investment decision if I put my money into cryptocurrency? These are all of the things that we're really going to like get to the bottom of today. Okay. So I want to talk first and foremost, what is Bitcoin and why do we care? So if you've heard some prior episodes, Bitcoin, I talked about, you know, in um, 2009, the, the white paper for Bitcoin was released by a pseudonymous person named Satoshi Nakamoto. Now, nobody knows who this person is, but in this white paper, he basically laid out an entire electronic payment system that is peer to peer. So no longer will I need to operate through a bank to be able to send you money across the world and vice versa or pay for services or pay for products or do all these things that have once been controlled by a bigger entity and bigger hands at play, right? Satoshi's vision was a peer-to-peer -peer where the world comes together as one and we can operate in this way. Now, sitting here about 12 to 13 years later from that initial white paper to where we are now, we've gone through some serious, like serious, serious, like leaps and bounds of growth. And we've also gone through a lot of ridicule and uh, just people thinking that we're absolutely insane. So I entered this space um, just for brief background uh, early in 2021. So it's been about 18 months um, in this world for me. And it wasn't until about six months uh, in that I actually dove head first and started really learning. Uh, actually, those first six months, I would say, that I was just merely an investor and I didn't really know what I was doing. I didn't know anything about the entire blockchain world. And then from that point, after diving head first, uh, I started working through educating people on onboarding and coming into taking these classes and understanding fundamentals and understanding how to research and, and knowing where we're going because this is a fast moving freight train. I don't want to get ahead of myself, uh, but that's something to kind of think about. So. I didn't know 
a lot of what I know now about all of this, I just thought, you know, Bitcoin and Ethereum sounded crazy because when I first got approached with it about it, it was in 2017 as a chiropractic student in chiropractic school on a student loan budget. What are you talking about? I'm not going to invest in some crazy cryptocurrency with money that I'm going to be paying back the government, you know, like these obscene interest rates. I'm like, no way. So I didn't, I didn't get involved. I didn't know anything. I wasn't, didn't have any understanding of it until 2021. And now I have a deep understanding or deeper understanding and my growth and my learning continues to develop every single day. And I get to teach you guys what I'm learning, which is amazing. And thank you all for being here. And thank you for allowing me to be your teacher. If there's any specific questions or topics you'd love me to cover in future episodes, reach out. You can reach out to me on Instagram at D-R-B-R-O-O-K-Sheehan, S-H-E-E-H-A-N. I'll put my Instagram link in the show notes so you have easily or you can easily access that. So reach out. Let me know if you have any questions uh, or you know topics you'd like me to cover. But getting back to Shatoshi, Shatoshi's initial vision of this being a peer-to-peer thing, you know, over time, it was really done. Bitcoin transactions were done on the black market, on the Silk Road. That's what it was called, the Silk Road. It was like the the black web, the dark internet time where people were like, you know, it was people telling each other about it, <clears throat> excuse me, and being able to transact with it. There was all kinds of pictures going, you know, back and forth of people buying, you know, like a pizza with 50 Bitcoin which actually seems absurd and crazy, like knowing what Bitcoin is worth now. But his vision was by the year 2050, there would be 21 million Bitcoin mined and 21 million Bitcoin that can be utilized worldwide as a, as a currency for transaction, right? To be able to use for products, for services, all these different things that like I spoke about earlier, but that was his vision by 2050 that this would happen. There's a lot of speculation of who Satoshi is and like what happened and why he's, you know, like not revealing himself. And, you know, I'm not going to go deep into conspiracy theory, but in my opinion, you know, if he was a man or like if he was a person that people knew, it could be a woman, but if they were a person that those people knew, the amount of ridicule he would be getting for trying to buck an old drawn out system would be probably almost unbearable for a person to deal with. And then the other thing that my mind goes to is like, maybe they would have tried to kill him, right? Like, Anybody who's tried to make real massive change in the world with whatever endeavor it is, there's a lot of collateral damage that happens as a result. Plus, I truly believe also he wanted to see the project flourish without him because that is currently what we are living in right now. We are living in a centralized system. We have a centralized corporations. We have centralized banks. We have centralized... All of these things are centralized, centralized, centralized to where there is like one person. There's a CEO of the company that everybody reports to. We have the shareholders. We have the people that run the centralized banks. He wanted this to be decentralized, meaning this is built and run by a community. These are how these blockchains are run and dealt with is by community. And they decide at the beginning of the blockchain what kind of consensus model they are going to run with. Episode 13, go back to that episode that will teach you what these consensus mechanisms are. He didn't want to be, he didn't want his face, like I said, in my opinion, to be involved in this project because he wanted the community to be involved. So here we are. Okay. Back on, back on track. Our little ride went off the uh, roller coaster due to, you know, your teacher over here going off on little tangents, but I'm back. So 21 million by 2050, right? We are at like 19 point something mind. So we have like 2 million less than 2 million to go. And we're sitting in 2022. So clearly 
you know, we're moving at a lot faster progression than the original white paper laid out, which is great news for the entire like blockchain industry, you know, but, but is that enough, you know, to tell you like to invest in Bitcoin and to tell you, oh, this is a great investment. And yes, you know, Bitcoin is going to skyrocket beyond a hundred thousand per piece, or is it really, truly going to zero? Because the people that will tell you it's going to zero, I would challenge you to really look at who they are. A lot of people who think they're going to zero is uh, our good old friend Warren Buffett. Most of you know who Warren Buffett is, and he is a smart, smart, smart businessman, but he is not at all into cryptocurrency. Not one single bit. But guess what? Not going to harp on Warren Buffett's age, but Warren Buffett is not savvy with blockchain. He doesn't understand a lot of how it works. Maybe he does, and maybe he still thinks that, but I can't understand why he would think that this like ever-evolving, huge, massive move into this space that's happening at a rapid speed is actually going to fall apart. Now, this isn't whether Bitcoin is going to stick around because even the big dogs fall, but it is fundamentally what blockchain technology does to the entire world and what it gives us, right? So, but this episode is all blockchain based, uh, Bitcoin based. So we're going to just stick to Bitcoin. Now, Bitcoin runs on proof of work consensus mechanism, right? We talked about that in episode, again, 13 block, uh, proof of work consensus mechanism. It requires so much time and energy to mine Bitcoin. What we are currently experiencing right now in the crypto market is a huge liquidation. Now, these liquidations in the past few months have happened as a result of big, huge investment firms coming in and holding Bitcoin but they were margin accounts, meaning they were lending, like investment firms were getting lent money to purchase Bitcoin. And then if Bitcoin fell to a certain point, they had to liquidate their assets in order to pay back their loans. So when Bitcoin started falling as a, as a result of, you know, like shady business practices from one company and then another, you know, big, huge liquidation along the road, it just kept allowing Bitcoin prices to fall, 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 fall. And that fear and greed index marker that the stock market uh, and crypto markets tend to um, go with, that that fear number went all the way down to like close to like eight. I don't know that it's ever fallen close to eight um, in a lot of other times, but it went all the way down to eight um, with fear um, because people were really questioning whether this is really going to recover. Now, do I think sitting here in the first week of July, do I sit here and think that Bitcoin is going to like continue to rise above? I definitely think that it's going to rise a little bit more, but it's also going to fall a lot more before we actually start to clean up all of the actual pieces and get our bearings straight. And then we're going to take off for the next bull run. So is Bitcoin one that you're going to be able to invest in and get these 100x returns on? I don't know. I truly don't know the answer to that. You know, the the whole premise of the original white paper of Bitcoin being used as transactional like funds. I don't know if that vision is being like uh, born. Like, I don't know if that is actually coming to fruition, really, truly. Because what I see happening is Bitcoin, because it is so decentralized and because it is deflationary, deflationary, not inflationary, it's deflationary because there's only going to ever be 21 million worldwide. Because Bitcoin is so, <coughs> excuse me, because Bitcoin is so widely held and held on to and not utilized, it's not exchanging hands very, you know, often. I don't see how Bitcoin is going to actually serve the purpose of replacing the dollar. I don't, I don't know that I see that. But I don't see Bitcoin going away entirely. 
I actually do see Bitcoin rising in value, but as a store of value. So kind of like gold is today, like gold is a store of value. We don't take gold chunks and go get a loaf of bread or some coffee with a piece of gold. We use fiat money to do that, but we hold gold as a store of value because generally speaking, right? Gold has gone up in value. That's why you have all those gold stores. Turn in your rings, turn in this, turn in that, and we'll give you cash, right? Those companies are making money because gold value prices are going up. So that's what I truly believe. You know, Bitcoin is going to continue to go up in value um, as a store of value. So the people investing, the big money that's coming into to, um, Bitcoin and, you know, all of the entire crypto space, to be honest, there are so many projects that are building out strong blockchains, um, blockchain protocols, other ones that allow cross chain, you know, in interoperability. Like these are huge, big plays for the entire blockchain space. So is Bitcoin going to zero as a result of, you know, like some liquidations that are happening um, from these big investment firms or liquidations that are happening because their miners are having to pay back the loans that they took in order to buy the expensive software and equipment, hardware that they need to actually mine Bitcoin. I mean, yes, those prices are dropping, but I don't believe it's going to zero just because of all of that. I do believe that those liquidations happening are a part of what needs to happen for this growth to occur, right? A lot of times we go through really hard, difficult times in our own lives. Like if we use our own lives as a mirror to what the markets, financial markets traditionally do, where there's ups, there's highs, there's so much joy and excitement and, you know, we're moving forward and life is great. And then there's these low points where we're grieving and we're sad and we're broken. But if we learn the lesson in both the highs and the lows, life gets so much better. And so there's so much to gain. We are shaking out bad apples. We are shaking out the people who don't belong in this space, the people who are scamming and rug pulling and hurting us along the way. We're getting rid of those. So this podcast is not at all financial advice. I'm not telling you to purchase Bitcoin. I'm telling you to have an open ear and an open eye when it comes to really, truly looking into this space. Because if we have oldies like, you know, Warren Buffett, who's incredible, don't get me wrong, talking about, you know, he's trying to like, like look at uh, cryptocurrency as a whole and Bitcoin like as just this fake, you know, fad that people are running with. And then you got the Chinese, the CCP, you know, government trying to shut down Bitcoin mining protocols. The reality is unless all of the big, huge governments get together and try to shut down the entire like internet, I don't know how they're going to be able to actually like really, truly like shut down the entire cryptocurrency market. And so if Bitcoin doesn't get shut down and it continues to rise in value and you do buy some, like, could that be like a worst case scenario? Like if if you dabble into cryptocurrency, I mean, you know, my, my, my thoughts are definitely like, it's not a bad thing to do at all. Like you can actually learn a lot from getting involved in this and you can actually be very early on right? Just like the four stages of any type of innovation in the world, right? First, they like ignore you. They ignore you completely. 2009, when people are running, you know, transactions on the Silk Road and and purchasing Bitcoins, like nobody was caring. Nobody was talking about it. Nobody was doing anything. Then they laugh at you. Ha 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 ha. You got in at, you know, like, You bought in at $100 of Bitcoin and now it's like three cents. Ha ha ha. ha. Like, look at that fake money. What what are you doing? After they laugh at you, then they try to, first they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you. So now what are we experiencing right now? 
Like, I really, truly ex- feel like we're experiencing the fight you staged. Like, they are fighting us. They're trying to, like, knock this down. People saying it's going to zero. All this speculation. These reporters saying, what is this? You know how many tapes and how many, like, videos there are of people turning around and saying, what is this email marketing? What is this email business? Why wouldn't I just go down the street and see my neighbor or write my grandmother a card? Right? Like, why were we like, they were knocking it so much because they did not understand traditional web one internet back then. We are at the fighting stage right now. We are at the fighting stage. And after the fighting stage, however long this fight takes, we're going to win. We are going to win. So I challenge you to really look. Like, take the information that I shared with you, and I know I was all over the board, but I I really hope that this kind of helped you see that there's a lot of advantages to being part of the cryptocurrency, like, ecosystem. There's a lot of advantages. It's not just for the investment gains, but it is for the community, like, benefits, the community that you are involved with. The, like, of course, the financial benefits are a huge reason why people come into the space. But the fact is, is there is going to be products and there's going to be all kinds of services that are being offered that are like in the Web3 ecosystem that you are going to be using every single day in the next 10 to 15 years. Mark my words. Like, honestly, like I'm talking to you on StreamYard right now, StreamYard. And I'm talking to you, you know, my podcast hosting is through Buzzsprout. Like those are products and services that have been on the scene since like, you know, well, they've been on the scene for a little bit of time, not since the early days of the internet, but they're a product of the internet. So if they didn't, if the internet didn't go through the whole stages of innovation, right? The ignoring you, the laughing at you, the fighting you, and then the winning you, like we wouldn't have these programs. So understand Bitcoin, yes, you know, there is investment opportunities with Bitcoin. It is not necessarily the um, the only thing within the Web3 world that you have to uh, participate in or not have to or get to participate in. There's a lot of different projects that are doing amazing different things um, that can really, you know, help jumpstart your uh time in this space because it's really early and we are at the fight. Uh, Join forces with us. This ride is coming to a close. My dear friends, thank you all for being here. Thank you for listening to this. I um, will reel it in. I'll reel all my tangents in uh, in the future. So bear with me. We are learning. We are growing. We are just evolving into a beautiful, beautiful population of humanity and people who you know, are just uh, coming together and really loving and learning uh, things together. So have an amazing rest of your day and I will see you on the next ride. You made it. Congratulations. That wasn't so bad, was it? I hope you laughed and learned a little bit more about this Web3 universe and how simple and fun it can really be. Would you be so kind as to leave us a review and share it with your friends and family? It would mean so much to get this out to more people as we embark on the greatest transfer of wealth that has ever happened in human history. Can't wait to see you on the next one.